In Office 365, we're going to create a public folder. And a public folder is something you can share among many different people or just a few or just yourself. So let's click on admin in our Office 365 home screen. And that takes us to the Office 365 admin center. From here, we'll click on admin centers and click on exchange. Now that we're in Exchange, you'll see the Exchange Admin Center. And off to the left in the bottom uh, part of the screen, you'll see Public Folders. And then you'll click on Public Folders at the top. We already have a public folder in there as a test. Let's go ahead and create a new one. Let's go ahead and click the plus. And we'll just put in Client B as the name. And we'll go ahead and choose the default path. And click Save. All right, so there's our client B. And if we go over to public folder mailboxes, we see a customer email and a vendor email. So if we click back on public folders and we click on the edit button, which is the picture of the pencil, we can see that by default it created in our customer email. Now that's because we created the vendor email uh, only a few minutes ago and it takes 15 minutes for it to show up. Whereas we created the customer email mailbox uh, about 20 minutes ago, so that's why that option is there. So after the 15 minutes is up, we'll actually have an option to choose a different public folder mailbox during the creation. So you need to have a public folder mailbox first before you can create the public folder. Now you can have as many public folders as you want under a mailbox. You can create just one mailbox and put all your public folders in there. The problem with that is if you use a lot of them, then the searching those public folders is going to take a long time. So it makes more sense if you're going to have, when I say a lot, I mean, I'm talking about the size of the uh, public folders themselves. So if you have public folders that are bigger than, say, two gigabytes, then it'd be smarter to create a separate mailbox for each one of those. If we click on statistics, we can see that there's nothing there yet. And we also have limits where we can set up limits as far as uh, how large it can get before it will be warned that you can't go any further or prohibited. Let's go ahead and click Save. And it was successful. We'll go ahead and click Close. Now we have a couple other options here. One is the folder permissions. Go ahead and click Manage on that, and you'll see some different options than what we saw before. So here's uh, the area where you give the ability for people to actually be able to see this thing. So we can see that if we choose the drop-down list, we have all different options for how much access people have. So for instance, if we choose contributor, you're going to see a lot of these boxes become unchecked. And if you want, you can just manually recheck them and it'll change it to custom. And then when you click them all, it's going to change it to owner. So let's click on browse and you see our three different users. Let's go ahead and click my name and I'm going to make myself the owner so I can go in and make any kind of changes I want to this public folder. It's going to take a little bit of time. And it was successful. We'll click close. And now we also have the option to mail enable this particular folder as well. So we click enable. We click yes. And now it's enabled. So let's switch over to our email. And we're going to click a new mail. So go ahead and click to create a new mail. And we're going to click the to button. And we're going to put in just the letter C, do a search, and we see client B showed up. So we say, yes, we want to send an email to client B. And we'll just take sales out of there. All right, so now we can go ahead and uh, send to client B and it will show up in that public folder. Now the public folder itself won't show up in our Outlook web access. It'll only show up in Outlook. Microsoft may change that in the future, but that's the way it is now. So that is how you create a public folder in Office 365.